Yes, 85% chance. Women's long jump. Women's long jump, 85%. Now for the U.S., headlined by Brittany Reese and Tara Davis. You have Chantel Malone as the top-ranked person on the flow track rankings. Uh, Daria Klashina, uh, Malika Mahambo of Germany, who's the reigning uh, world champion. You have Issa Brume of Nigeria, who's the world leader. Quinesha Burks of the U.S., who was third behind Reese and Davis in um, in Eugene. Those are all the big names. I'd be surprised if someone medals off of your off of your top list there because you have someone like Reese, who's just so solid. <laughs> She got five outdoor golds, silver in Rio. I mean, the most underrated American track athlete, I think, of this of this current era. But you have Malone number one. I'm guessing just because I mean she's gotten over seven meters this year, which doesn't put her doesn't separate her too much from everybody else. But I'm guessing just the volume of competitions with her. Yeah, volume of competitions and. When you look at uh, comp- uh, events where there's wind involved, where the sprint or jump, mm-hmm. you kind of want to see, all right, what type of tailwind are they getting? Are they doing these types of jumps into a headwind, and how consistent are they? So yeah. she's jumped over seven meters four different times. It was all in the U.S., and they're all in low-key meets, right? It was – yeah, you know, one was in Miramar, Florida. She had two she, – and then three – Two chill, two chill vistas. Uh, so you kind of want to. The, the only uh, concern I would have for her is that all of her seven meter jumps have been earlier in the season, and when she went to like a diamond league, she jumped six sixty five and finished mm-hmm. fourth, and that was in uh, in Italy. Now. I think a lot of these Americans, when they're going to the diamond league, it's like just really. Not she's not American, but she's U.S. based. When uh, they go to overseas, the whole COVID stuff and like it's just like a one you hear once and you leave. They're not really in the the mode of putting together mm-hmm. the best performance because uh, you know there's so many other factors. But when it comes to the Olympics, I feel like the travel for Olympics is just going to be a different animal. You're going to get there a lot earlier. You're going to be more right. settled. You're going to be more focus that you're not just here for an appearance fee so i don't think i want to hold that against her i have her i think it would be an upset if she were to win but i just had to give a little more credit to four different you know seven meter jumps and not many other women are doing that so between those top women brume no diamond leagues this year reese no diamond leagues davis no diamond leagues malone one diamond league out of the first four women of the year, they've competed combined in one Diamond League. Here's another thing to consider. You know how popular the new Diamond League format is for the long jump, where they get the top three and then they do one jump and the best jump wins, and people have been complaining about it relentlessly since this was debuted. They're not going to do this in the Olympics. But here's where it gets interesting when you actually dig into the results. Malika Mahambo, who again has not had the same season she had in 2019. She jumped 730 in 2019. Her season best this year is 692. And you look at her record and there's some losses on it. She's got some second places in the Diamond League, three of them. Well, two of those losses came when she would have won ordinarily, but she essentially lost that six-round jump off to Spanovic of Serbia. So if you're looking at wins and losses and you're saying, okay, well, wind readings, track conditions – those are kind of making it difficult for me to figure out who's the best. I want to look at who's been racking up some wins. Mahambo has more losses than she should actually have if this was under the regular rules. Now, again, it's not like she's jumping out of the pit here. She's jumping 690s and and 680s. But those would have been two more wins, and then she'd be going in, I think, with a better in a better position because you'd say, okay, this 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 person's won. Won some Diamond League competitions. Just something to keep an eye on when you're when you're trying to figure out who's going to win this thing. Um, what do you think about? I like the Reese and Davis dynamic. I think it's really cool when you have, you know, the the new Old guard and, and then the, the yeah. yeah the the, the and that well and Reese is still so good. She's still so good. And again, she ran off all those gold medals. What do you think about that matchup? 
Yeah, I think uh, I think Brittany Reese still being good is great for for Tara Davis because um, it allows her to not settle and be like kind of complacent every time she because if Davis is coming off a uh, NCA season where she's just destroying everyone, right? And she's kind of like, you kind of get that, that cocky vibe. I'm not going to say she's cocky or anything, but like you just get that uber confidence. You're like, you come in day in and day out. and like, hey, I'm the best whenever I step. And then she goes to USA's and she loses to, to Reese. And I think that little is like, all right, this ain't NCA's anymore. This isn't the Big 12 championship. This is a new level. Mm-hmm. And – to be able to compete against Reese at the Olympic trials, I think sets her up well for the Olympic games. Cause she knows like, all right, I went toe to toe with Reese and there's no one else. Who's really going to really, there's not like 20 other Reese's at the Olympic games. There's maybe two or three right. other. So you're, she's more prepared. So I think when she competes at the Olympic games for the first time, I think she's, it's going to feel more normal to her because she'll be like, all right, well, I, I already I've jumped against Reese before and she beat me, but you know, I was mm-hmm. I was with her. As long as I'm near her, I should be a medal contender. And I, that's what I think yeah. we have right here. I have them getting second and third. Um the more and more I think about it, the Malone pick, I think it might not happen. I'm starting to fall out of love with my own rankings, but I just had to <laughs> go by what I'm going by and I'm I'm putting her up number one. Hey, upsets happen and maybe this is the one yeah. upset that the rankings success successfully predict. Yeah. Well, you have someone like Spanovic in ninth, and I get it because of the mark she's put out this year. But then, you know, she does have the win- wins. Uh, you want to put asterisks on them. You can but she was at least in the she's in the mix in all these diamond leagues at the very least. You can you can say the long jump rules are not fair and don't reward the best jumper. But someone like that I could see popping up there as well too. I think I think this is going to be a real fun competition. I have the U.S. chances at 85%. What do you think of those? Too low again? Too high? It's I'm too counting low. on Reese or Davis. I think I'm counting on oh, 90. Sorry, I was off by 5%. I'm counting on Reese or Davis to pop a big one. They're too good. They're too talented. Reese has too much experience. One of those two is going to come through and and hit something big. Yeah, I think women's pole vault, women's long jump, both have potential to get us two medalists. So USA might collect four medals in that situation. I'm I'm excited to look back on all the events before the Olympics actually start. Once we to kind of project yeah. what our potent, like you said, our potential. The, the U.S.'s potential uh, medal haul, um, it could be way over 30 the more and more I look at it. I'll give my official number on our final one on Wednesday once I total all these up. I'll take all my percentages and I'll put them up. It'll be like when people predict NFL schedule, like when every single yeah, game. Yeah, over-unders. And then they end up – Yeah, yeah. Well, no. no they, they predict every single – and it doesn't like equal out to the right, right amount because they have like every team like going 9-7 and seven or something. That's how it's going to be. There's just not going to be enough medals for how many I predict. No, I just think in a competition like the Olympics that's very unpredictable, you have to have more than one way to medal. If you're just counting on one person, that could go against you a lot of times. So if you have two people and one of the people is a proven championship uh, competitor, you like your chances that one of them is going to go through um, and get a medal at the very least. But yeah, gold, silver is definitely... Possibility too. Tara Davis could win gold. Brittany Reese could win gold. Those, obviously, those are not bold picks if they happen based on what both of them have done throughout their careers. 